हेलो सीकर्स वेलकम टू पुनीस एस्ट्रोलॉजी योर वन स्टॉप एस्ट्रो चैनल मार्स विच इज एग्जॉल्ट इन केप्रिकॉन विल गेट आउट ऑफ केप्रिकॉन जोडियक साइन एंड मूव टू अक्वेरियस जोडियक साइन अनदर सैटर्नियन जोडियक साइन बट दिस टाइम इट विल फाइंड द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सैटर्न इन द जोडियक इट सेल्फ अक्वेरियस इज अ जोडियक साइन ऑफ गेन्स इट इज अ जोडियक साइन ऑफ नेटवर्क कनेक्शन एंड मार्स एनर्जी विल फ्लरिश but the fi- the fire of mars is kind of fanned by the air of aquarius in such a way that uh, instead of burning like something positive it kind of flutters it kind of uh, moves in all directions and that is why i have seen that in many cases mars don't perform well in aquarius but this time it finds saturn and saturn's grip saturn's potential saturn's determination can channelize the energies of mars and it will channelize your energies also now when mars goes in aquarius on 15th of march it will find venus present there so the first encounter will not be with saturn but it will be with shukra which kind of uh, pacifies the negativity uh, if there is any one of the better thing in this time will be because of the mars venus and saturn combination is that energy passion finesse and hard work come together you combine them and you are getting something very beautiful the the beauty the finest the finest of the arts will be created when this mars will enter aquarius zodiac sign this is going to be very have a prominent impact on navigation sailors on the navy on the air force flying jets rockets and advanced technologies especially manufacturing technologies will take a different kind of tangent when mars enters the 11th house of kalpurush this is going to continue till 23rd of april so it's a quite a long time and you will see that all along mars transit jupiter is stable in aries zodiac sign which is the zodiac sign of mars this jupiter kind of buffers lot of things You know Saturn was aspecting Aries zodiac sign since its move to Aquarius the third aspect of Saturn the vakra drishti it was troubling Jupiter in Aries and now when with the entry of Mars the dispositor of Jupiter now comes in contact with Saturn and therefore this combination eases things out now Mars wants to stop Saturn from harming the Jupiter uh, because you know Uh, Aries is the sign of debilitation of Saturn. Now, on the negative side, this may mean that there can be certain protests throughout the world. There can be challenges for different governments. But on the other hand, this also means that dharma will prevail, and people will fight for their rights. You will see that you will want justice in your life, and which is good in a way. What you should not do is take any revenge. in the name of justice if you fight for a revenge if there is a vengeance and you are taking any step this can be really bad and can land you in legal trouble so be aware of that also if you sh- if you go by the book and protect and defend yourself and consider defense as the best offense you will be in the right shape let's discuss for each ascendant and you have to watch this video as per your vedic ascendant vedic lagna but you can also review this video as per your vedic moon sign because all you have to do is consider what i'm saying as more psychological in nature rather than something that can happen in real life if you if you want to check the impact on the body in real life check from ascendant if you want to check the impact on your mind check it from your moon sign if you want to take my consultation you can drop me an email the email id is in the description box below and on the screen join me on patreon i have i'm using patreon currently as a platform to upload nakshatra pada transits you can take the subscription this helps me run the channel and cover the cost but also in return i try to give such information which i obviously cannot upload on a public platform like youtube where i explain the nuances of the nakshatra pada of jupiter rahu ketu and saturn and also i i am trying to introduce nakshatra basics on the other hand if you want to know something extra 
about the transits I upload there. So join me there also. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and follow me for reels and other interesting stuff, the link are in the description box below. Let's start Ascendant Wise Analysis. But before that, do not forget to subscribe because subscription keeps you and me stay connected and let's spread the word of Vedic Astrology by sharing the videos. Aries Ascendant. Now in case of Aries Ascendant, it is your first Lord, it's your eighth Lord and it goes in the 11th house and it meets the position of Saturn. Now Saturn is in its mole record zodiac sign. So you can understand that when your Ascendant Lord goes in the office of Saturn, this is business. This means something is going to happen and something will execute in your life. So if you really want to work on your dreams, this is the time. If you want to uh, overcome any obstacle, this is the time. If there is any mental block that is stopping you from doing things in your life, then this is the time to overcome and overturn that. See, Mars and Saturn are not inherent enemies. Mars is somebody who is, you can say it's a police, whereas Saturn is the law. It's the job of police to maintain the law. It's the job of lawyer, lawmakers to create laws which will be a, which the cops and the forces will ensure that there is security and there is no threat so you see they go hand in hand it is our problem that we consider them enemies but you know what's happening mars means acceleration and saturn means slowing down deceleration when both happens maybe your life doesn't move it's like pressing the accelerator and the brake at the same instant there will be a lot of noise the tires and the engine will roar, but there won't be any movement. So this is the problem. Our life sometimes can become stagnant because of Saturn-Mars conjunction. But because it's your Ascendant Lord going in the 11th house, and this is happening in the 11th house, this is the point of execution. Changes and some really, really big changes will happen in your life. You also have to understand that Saturn was aspecting your Ascendant since January 2023. When your Ascendant Lord goes there, Ascendant Lord will put its case in front of Saturn. This is the first time when your Ascendant will become powerful and will come in equation, in equilibrium with Saturn. And therefore, this is a seemingly negative time, is actually a very auspicious time, just that you have to treat it that way. Health-wise, you will have to be very careful, especially related to lifestyle issues. Don't overstress yourself. Don't overthink. From the perspective of career and business, this is going to be a brilliant time. New opportunities will come. You will be able to break the jinx. If you are waiting for something that is, that is a dream come true, that will happen. It's a dream come true transit. Don't forget that Jupiter is on your ascendant, supporting you all the way. Now, what you should do? Hard work will have no substitute for this transit. You will have to continuously work hard. Mars will aspect the second house also. So this means there can be challenges and, and ego battles or even point of difference between family members, especially because of the entry of a third person. So don't involve a third person between matters of your relations unless it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, things may go even to court. Now, Mars 8th aspect will fall on the 6th house. So this is good because this cuts down the prarabdha. This cuts down loan. This helps you gain health. But yes, you will have to work for it. If you do yoga, practice Hatha Yoga if possible. Chant Hanuman Chalisa seven times a day. Donate something on Tuesdays and Saturdays. You will see that your wishes will come true. But you need to be very careful what you wish for. Now, because your Mars is, is with Saturn, especially around 10th and 11th of April, they will collide. So avoid these two dates and then plan accordingly. Usually you should plan things when Mars is ahead of Saturn because let the Mars get the experience of Saturn. That does not stop you from doing anything, but you should be aware that the forces are coming from opposite directions and therefore there is only resultant for action that will happen. That means if one is if two forces are at 90 degree, your movement will be at 45 degree. So plan accordingly. Taurus. 
Now for Taurus, if you observe, Mars rules your 7th house and 12th house. 7th house of business and relationships, marriages, contracts, circumstances. 12th house for foreign travel, losses, hospitalization, expenses. And that planet is in the 10th house. When it moves out of exaltation, it goes in the 10th house. And 10th house is all about karma. And then there is Saturn in its Moltrikon zodiac sign. So what do you expect out of this Mars? You should not expect any less than hard work, constant efforts to execute your dreams and desires, something positive happening in your workplace, but not in a pleasant manner. That means you will have to put forward all your might, put all your efforts, give your 200% and you will be given the positive result of that. People who have been working from a very long time will see a major change in their career. One mistake, a fit of anger, if you don't have control on yourself, then this can cause financial losses, lawsuits. This can cause loss of job because Saturn can be restrictive in nature. Any attempt of acquiring power unnecessarily is only going to create a lot of trouble. Rather, this is the time of reform. If you make policy reforms, if you are going to change the hierarchy, if you are going to revisit how you are going to make everything efficient, be it your business or even if you are an employee, you will see great things happening in your way once Mars crosses the degree of Saturn after 10th and 11th of April. So until 23rd of April, this is going to be a very critical time for all of you who are employed or who are doing business. Now for those who are elderly, you should be careful about your joint pains, arthritis, especially the area surrounding the knee and ankles. If you are, a, if you are an athlete, you should be also careful because this can cause an injury. An injury can be, uh, it can be something that can put you out of the game for a considerable amount of time. People who are physiotherapists, people who are involved into healing, people who are chiropractors, people who are involved in real estate, people who are involved in brokerage, uh, brokering firms and people who are involved into uh, any kind of policy making. Uh, if you want to prepare for IAS, IPS examination, this is a great time for you. But you have to put in your hard work, you have to put in your 200%. Now, with the matters of love and relationship, this can be a difficult time because most of the uh, time will be consumed towards your career and you will have less time to enjoy, you will have less time to focus on your family. In fact, this, ca this can create work-related travel and even expenses. Maybe you are investing something. After all, it's your 12th Lord. But see the good side and bright side of it. This will give you something positive in the future. All you have to do is know your limits. See, Mars and Saturn coming together means you have to understand that your car is stuck in a traffic jam. Enjoy the car. Listen to the music. Don't worry about the traffic. If the car is moving, however slow it may be, you will ultimately reach your destination. If you cause worry to yourself, nothing is going to happen. Seventh Lord being with Saturn also shows major transformation in your marriage. This can create conflicts, difference of opinion, and this can create a heated argument between the couples. So try to stay calm. As I said, no domination, no control of power. Imposition of thoughts is also a bad idea. Because Saturn and Mars being in the 10th house aspects, the 4th house, health of mother can also be a problem. If you have issues with your brother or brother-in-law, then Saturn-Mars conjunction can make you work towards it and resolve the issue. On the other hand, if you observe Mars, 8th aspect will fall on your 5th house, which shows that no past experience might help you, but rather this is the time to learn on the job and the experience that you gather now will actually come handy in the future. Praying to Bhagavan Shanidev by chanting Om Sham Shanasharaya Nama is going to be helpful and also fasting on Tuesdays and Saturdays, avoiding non-vegetarian food, Avoid consuming alcohol on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Light a mustard oil diya every Saturday and chant Hanuman Chalisa and Hanuman Kavach.
Hope this helps. Gemini. Now in case of Gemini, Mars rules your two very important house, 6th and 11th house. So what's so crucial about this? These two houses are called Upachya houses. Upachya house are those houses which helps you run your life, which gives you sufficient income, which keeps the ball rolling and keeps your life moving. Obviously, these are also connected to your free will. Now, when Mars, which is 50% of the four Upachya house, two out of four, goes into the ninth house, this means you will define your destiny. It's the time when God puts destiny in your own hands. And with Saturn being there, with patience, you can write stuff. If Mars is the ink and Saturn is the body of the pen, ninth house is the slate where you can write your destiny. Because they aspect the third house, house of hands. But you have to follow the path of Dharma. Because Mars and Saturn will create something called as Dharma Sankat. That means couple of ways, but which, which path to choose you won't be able to understand because both will seem correct. You have to, you may have to go and do some sacrifice, like you may have to choose a path which you don't want, but maybe that's what's necessary and that is what is going to create positive effect on not only your life, but also the life of your loved ones. So Mars and Saturn conjunction in the ninth house is not a bad conjunction. It only shows that you are in contradiction with yourself, with your own belief system, with your own guru, with your own teachings, with your own, own identity. So it can create an identity crisis. Financially, this is going to be a time of transformation. This is going to be a time where you will travel a lot. If your 11th Lord is in ninth house, this means that your destiny will change, your income will come, your debts will reduce, Travel will happen. So if you want to travel for work, if you are involved in hotel industry, if you are involved in travel and tourism, if you are involved in transport sector, if you are involved in battery, vehicle, uh, if you have a garage of similar kind of stuff, you will see that this transit of Mars and Saturn will give you a lot of growth, a lot of success. If you work in heavy machinery, if you are working in railways, if you are preparing for railway examination, good for you. If you want to transfer, if you want to travel abroad, this is a great time. Ninth house means house of divinity, house of higher thinking. And when Mars and Saturn goes there, it gives you an opportunity to bring a major transformation. Remember, it's sixth and eighth Lord in ninth house. Big things will happen in your life, especially if you are a young person, if you are someone between 24 to 50, 44 years of age, this Mars and Saturn will give you tremendous amount of opportunity. But you will have to choose by being the wisest. Anything where you are struggling to decide, you may need to take help. You may have to look into your horoscope. People with a, a bad Mars or Saturn in their birth chart should be careful, should avoid from any road rage. While you're traveling, you should be careful because there can be challenges and negative events. Praying to Bhagwan Hanuman, going to Hanuman temple every day and if not every day, every Tuesday and Saturday is an effective way to manage the energies of Mars and Saturn. Remember, Jupiter is there to support you in the 11th house and it is going to support you throughout the Mars transit with Saturn. Make the best use of it. Don't argue with your teacher. Don't argue with your father. This is the time to be an empty cup New information will come soon and you will change. Health-wise, you will have to take care of your lower back. You will have to take care of amount of responsibility you absorb and carry. Because if you take too much, if you commit too much, you will end up fulfilling it but breaking your back. So be wise and know your limits. Cancer Ascendant now for you, Mars is a very important planet. Mars rules your 10th house, it rules your 5th house, and it goes in the 8th house with Saturn. And this is a kind of time where events in your life can disturb your happiness and sleep, especially if you are involved in risky investments, if you take participation in stock trading, some will see sudden gains, 
and that can disturb your plans. Many will see sudden losses and can disturb or derail your plans. So the guidance here will be not to decide your future on the basis of what happens now, both good and bad. See, 8th house Mars and Saturn talks a lot about heavy defense, going for a lot of research, being very protective about your finances, about yourself and focusing on the family life. There can be challenges with your in-laws if you are married and so try to avoid any confrontation. This is also a time where you might be a little worried about your connection with your children. So if you are facing any child custody related issue, there can be challenges there. So be careful. And when fifth and seventh Lord sits in the eighth house, there are sudden chances of transformation coming in married life. There, there are sudden chances of transformation coming in your career, because if I see from the other angle, the 10th and the 7th house are in connection. That means the marriage and career are going to collide and intersect at some point, which might create some difficult situation. Stress is your biggest enemy. Health can be impacted because too much of strong energy is in the 8th house. Don't forget that Venus is also in the 8th house. The good thing is that Venus will be quickly in Sadbhisha Nakshatra. And uh, in fact, Venus will be in Sadbhisha Nakshatra before the entry of Mars in Aquarius, paving the way for healing and therapies. Your anger management should be done with first prior as, as a first priority. And whatever you do, take things one day at a time and you will see that you will be easily able to manage. Just that while you are driving, while you are purchasing something, especially your property, real assets, be mindful of your expenses, be mindful of your capacity. Don't overburden yourself with anything. For the elderly, this is going to be a little challenging with respect to health. Now, especially if you are a cancer moon sign. Why? Because with respect to your mental health, there is too much happening in the Ashtamabhav, 8th house. Health of mother can also be a little concerned during this time. And it will be difficult for you to strike balance between work and, uh, and, and, and your home, you might get too engaged in your work related activities that you don't get time at your, uh, to spend at your home. You can't enjoy little things. Maybe you are too busy or events in your home are overpowering your efficiency at work, which will create stress that you're not performing. So be careful. You will have to strike a balance. And that is your test when Mars and Saturn will be in the 8th house. Now here you should chant Hanuman Chalisa at least, if possible, 21 times every day. Bring Hanuman Yantra at home and fast on Saturdays. Donate iron on Saturday. Donate old clothes if possible and try to be as decluttered as possible. This is the time to heal. Use salt therapies if possible. Use sound therapies if possible. and don't be disturbed too much if there is anything negative coming your way or if there is anything positive coming your way because both can be little overwhelming say for example you run a business and now you get an order once in a lifetime order but you know you can't fulfill that behave wisely take all decisions wisely and uh, focus more on your mental health because nothing is more important than your health Leo Ascendant. Now for you, Mars will come in your 7th house. A 7th house Mars means a Mars and Saturn conjunction in the house of marriage and business partnerships. This can heavily impact your marriage. This can heavily impact your partnerships, considering that your Ascendant Lord Sun will be in the sign of Pisces with Rahu. That means uh, you will go under identity change. There will be a lot of criticism and circumstantial changes coming your way. Maybe the circumstance will force you to go into transformation. All you have to do is go for that transformation, but ensure that you are only upgrading and not downgrading. See, Mars is a kind of planet which like war, which wants to compete. Seventh house has nothing to do with competition. Seventh house is about merger, partnership, equal opportunity, diversity, 
and therefore Saturn is very powerful there. This can easily irritate Mangal, Mars, which is your ninth lord as well as your fourth lord. Now, fourth lord being in the Bhavad Bhavan position and not in a good position shows a really uncomfortable situation. But if you play maturely, you will be in a good spot. After all, you will see that even if you want something to do, there will be responsibilities, hurdles, roadblocks and challenges that will guide you and navigate you to a different direction. Now, you have to also navigate your life and steer your life in a positive direction, especially in your business by not focusing on rapid growth, whereas you need to focus on sustainability. Because if you're focusing only on rapid growth, then this can create problems overall. Challenges can come in relationship or marriages that are already facing separation or problems. So control your anger. People who have exalted Mars should be careful during this time because your Mars is already in your sixth house. Now, this can also impact your health because you may overwork, you may burden yourself, you may burn, cause a burnout to your body. So in that case, my recommendation is to strike the balance and the balance can be attained by doing both proper rest and proper work. So discipline and segmentation of your responsibility throughout the day is very important. Worrying too much about the future is not going to give you anything when Saturn and Mars is in the seventh house. Don't forget that there is Venus also there until 23rd of April. Now, Venus is also your career lord, your efforts. So it shows that you are trying to recover something, trying to mend a relation, trying to make things go in the right direction. But excess of anything is bad. You can't force anything your way. So this is not a time where you will execute the force, but just ride the wave. So be on the boat, enjoy the view and ride the wave while you are praying to Bhagwan Hanuman, because if you surrender to his feet, he will guide you in the right direction. Starting a new venture or a business with partnership can be a little tricky. So take that into consideration, especially the paperwork and legal formalities. Otherwise, it's a transit that can bring averaging, normalization and equilibrium in your life. Accept what is about to come. Virgo. Now, in case of Virgo, Mars will be in your sixth house. Mars and Saturn going in sixth house is actually quite good. But you have to wait until Venus exits out of the Aquarius zodiac sign and Venus goes exalt when the real results of the planets will start coming, which will be in your favor. Mars, Saturn and Venus in the sixth house shows that you are trying to build a platform. You are trying to move things. You are trying to win a battle in your life. And that is exactly that that will happen because if you observe for Virgo, it's a Viparit Raj Yoga because Mars is your eighth Lord in the sixth house with the sixth Lord, which shows if you have any debt related problems, it will be resolved. If anything was stuck, it will start moving. Things will move in the positive direction and you will be able to overcome your negative thoughts. You will not only win on the legal front, but also on the professional front. If you are stuck and you're not getting a job, this is the time you will find the right job for you. May not be something that you always were hoping for or something that is very charming, but very functional in nature. So if you are very functional, very raw in your attitude and you're moving in that direction, you are going in the right direction. Now, Mars will have its fourth aspect on the ninth house, which shows career related travel. Also, some favor will come from the people you admire and trust. So start networking, start contacting the, the social contacts that you have. Now, when Mars will be in the sixth house, one property of this Mars is that it breaks you and remakes you. Why? Because its eighth aspect falls on the first house. So while being in the sixth house, it protects and upholds the dharma, ninth house, whereas it dismantles the first house. So it kind of breaks the ego. So this Mars and Saturn is more like a strict teacher who is trying to come with a cane and a stick to tame you, to discipline you, to reshape your life in a positive sense. So you may not like initially what Mars is trying to do, a lot of hard work, a lot of struggle, but eventually you are winning. You are being positioned in a place where 
what platform you will build now you will be able to capitalize then financially uh, you might also face if you're in business some problem with your teammates with your juniors with the people around you but if you understand their concern and problem you are in a good shape from the relationship perspective it only shows that you are still trying to find yourself and there will be changes in your personality so try to manage that and you will be in a good 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 shape and good position to handle any relationship problems that is why i'm saying wait for venus to become exalt because venus when it goes in the sign of pisces it is in the seventh house so your hard work will be appreciated then right now all you have to do is keep moving keep the ball rolling and stay in the game don't quit if you think you can win in the future if you do chant hanuman chalisa and bajrang baan if you can visit hanuman temple and if you can help someone who is really in need someone who is injured someone who is sick you will be in a uh, you you will get the blessings of mangal and shani also if somebody can go to ujjain and visit mangalnath mandir if you are if you are in india it will be a great time to do libra now in case of libra mars is very important it is the ruler of 7th and 2nd house the ruler or lord of 7th and 2nd house coming in your 5th house is in one way good for your business but you will have to fight a lot it's a challenge to your learning it's a challenge to your talent and skill so if you are willing to upskill learn from the business face the music and fight hard you will become victorious but if you become fearful if you start doubting your own talent then you will have multiple questions running in your head this is going to create inhibitions you will think more about what family will say you will think more about what finances will say you know you will get unnecessarily defensive when mars enters aquarius and because of the vayu tatva of aquarius and also the lordship of aquarius is kind of co-ruled by rahu you will start assuming difficulties and instead of things becoming positive you will try to do a self analysis sometimes over self analysis and you can do a self sabotage or self block because your ascendant lord venus will be with the same mars and saturn so what you should do is you should be functional you should start moving think why you started in the first place also uh, you might be a little bit worried towards the towards your children if you are going to give birth to a child you have to take great care of your health and you have to try to maintain fitness through diet fifth house is also stomach so no non vegetarian food high calorie food red meat should be completely avoided during this time avoid tamas completely focus only on the satvik clean diet also uh, mars will aspect your 8th house so sometimes you might suddenly have this urge to earn big through so through speculative business be careful there mars and saturn aspecting your 11th house shows that there can be you know a little bit of hurdle in earning money you know sometimes you go to an interview you know you are confident but suddenly four questions they ask and you realize that you really don't know and now you have this question am i ready am i prepared these kind of stuff might happen but if you have confidence if you prepare if you go well prepared into your life into the events of your life nobody can beat you you should not forget that there is jupiter in the 7th house aspecting your lagna so doesn't matter what mars saturn has to do in the 5th house it's jupiter in the 7th house that can protect you so always 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 rely on jupiter here although when mars is the lord of the 7th house and second lord scorpio its lord is coming in the 5th house it is going to give financial gain so basically it is going to make you learn so much get so much of experience which you can apply later and find the right career choice but right now i will say it's a time to learn not a time to execute anything don't go for an internal war otherwise it will go in loop take care of your health scorpio ascendant now in case of scorpio your ascendant lord is ruled by mars your ascendant lord goes in fourth house and find saturn saturn is causing a shash yoga by the way but when mars goes there this creates a kind of an atmosphere where 
you would want to run away from home. You would want to change things around you. You would want to take control of the property. You would want to buy a vehicle. If you are in real estate, you would want to do something big. Why? Because your ascendant lord, wherever it goes, you want, you want to execute physical presence there. Which means if you are in a foreign country, you may have to come back to your home. If you are in a different place, you may have to revisit your home. Or because of a career obligation, you don't want to leave your home, but you have to. So something will happen that will go against your plan, against your wish, but you have to understand the grand design. You have to understand that there may be higher powers working for you. You also have to understand that this is a Mars, Saturn and Venus conjunction and soon Mars and Saturn will meet around 10th and 11th of April. Which means that your first Lord and the fourth Lord as well as your sixth Lord and third Lord will meet. This creates a kind of a chain reaction which will help you build a career and follow your passion. And you can't follow your passion if you're lazy. These things don't come easy. You have to work hard. And Saturn and Mars wants you to work hard. So if you want to build a career out of your passion, this is the time. People involved in manufacturing sector, energy sector, metallurgy, metals, electrical, electrical appliances, wires, and all similar fields will see great boost in their career. Petrochemical or people involved in petrochemical as a job, uh, if you are a supplier, if you have a petrol pump, good for you. But you have to also observe that when 6th Lord and 3rd Lord are connected in the 4th house, you may have to repay the debt through your own happiness. That means your responsibility will take the maximum share of your time and you should not regret that. It is also going to make you happy later on. So the pain now is happiness in the future. Although Jupiter is in the 6th house, trying to aspect the 12th house, trying to aspect the 10th and the Second house, so Jupiter is taking care of the financial trine. Say you are in a problem and you are in deep debt and you have a property which is stuck. You are not able to sell it. This is the time the possibilities to sell the property will be really very high because you're not selling it for profit. You're selling it to resolve a crisis. So crisis management and resolution will happen during this time, be it your personal life or your professional life. But you have to be very careful about the anxiety, hypertension, you valuing small things more than needed and you becoming sentimental or even your response is more about cold response and unjust response. The best thing that you should do is evaluate situation at hand step by step, one case at a time, one day at a time and don't judge an event now with an event in the past. If you start comparing, you will become unhappy. You should go and stay in the Hanuman temple like for two couple of hours every Tuesday and Saturday if possible. You should chant Hanuman Chalisa, Bajrang Baan. And there is a mantra which you should chant. Mano Javam Maruta Tulya Begam Jitendriyam Buddhi Matam Varishtam Vatat Majam Vanara Yutha Mukhyam Shri Ramaduta Sharam Prapadya. The mantra is flashing on the screen. This is a prayer. You should chant this every day and remember Bhagwan Hanuman and say Jai Shri Ram. You know, this will give you the courage. This will install the courage. It will take away the fear. Otherwise, Mars and Saturn can create a lot of fear. It can create a lot of noise in your head. Health of mother can be a bit of challenge. And don't sleep with your head pointed to the north. Sagittarius, what an interesting transit for you. Saturn in the third house, Mars moving in the third house, Mars being the fifth lord, as well as your twelfth lord. So if you really want to expand your business, this is the time when you can hit the hammer on the nail. This is the time when you can take those bold steps and decisions. This is the time when your fire can actually move you in the positive direction because Saturn is there to protect you. But you should know your limitation. You should always weigh your limitation. You should always know the roadblocks and never overcome it when Mars and Saturn are together in Aquarius zodiac sign. In fact, on 10th and 11th of April, Mars and Saturn will be on the same degree. And Mars and Saturn will be in the Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra in that time. That means this is the time when lot of things, you will quit lot of things or you will delegate lot of tasks. 
So if you want to build a team, open a company, if you want to go for a startup, this is a very good moment. But yes, you have to follow the dharma. You may have to take a different route. What you have planned, plans may go in the cupboard and you have to recreate another plan. So that is that is something uh, you have to do. You have to adjust. So improvise, adapt and overcome all the problems in your life. Now, if you see Mars will aspect the sixth house, taking care of your debt. And then Mars will aspect the ninth house. So this is where you need to believe in yourself and when you stand firm for yourself you will win if you start doubting everything then saturn's job is to create delay and there will be a delay this saturn mars uh, in the third house shows that through your own hand you will create disruption in your image in your career so if you want to go for branding if you want to launch a company if you want to rebrand yourself if you want to deconstruct and reconstruct you know kind of taking a month's break and then coming back with a bang you can do that plan it because this is the time which can change your career, which can change your dimensions. If you want to change your domain, if you want to go to a different country, if you want to go for your, you know, pitch for your dream company, if you want to pitch to an investor, this is the right time. Why? Because 12th Lord coming in the third house shows that you are working with losses in mind. You have nothing to lose. And you should be ready to take that little calculated risk. I won't say don't take 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 big risk but take small calculated risk and that is going to secure your future after all jupiter is in your fifth house it is going to help you expand your identity and tell you much more because your ascendant lord in the fifth house and fifth lord which was exalted now coming with saturn is a big raj yoga just that you should know when to apply the brakes you make encounter shoulder or back related problem, neck related problem, sore throat. Your communication can be a bit uh, aggressive. Try to manage this, drink hot water, try to take care of your throat. And uh, if you are a boxer, be protective because this can cause an injury. Uh, if you are a firefighter, or if, if any, any way you are connected to fire or electrical, be careful because of there can be a chance of electrical or fire hazard through your hand so be mindful of those things protect and defend this is the message of mars and saturn in the third house you will be able to achieve that quite easily and you will see that your knowledge will convert into action so this is the time to prove what you know capricorn now in case of Capricorn, Mars was on your ascendant and now Mars is in the second house. Now when Mars goes in the second house, it meets Saturn. This means that now you start feeling the restrictions. Now you start seeing the obstacles. Now you will see the practical side of everything. You were over enthusiastic, you wanted to achieve something, you were on high on energy and now Saturn reminds you of what cannot happen what cannot be done so this is looking like a grand filter to me that is going to filter out all the unexpected it's you know it's like clip un unwanted frequencies and allow only uh, a certain level of frequencies it gives me a very uh, typical example of band pass filter that only a certain range will be allowed and permitted to pass that means of all the dreams of all the activity of all the functions that you have initiated some will execute successfully some will not and if you are trying everything and it is not getting executed, I will say wait for some time because this means it is not supposed to in the first place. Now, on the other hand, if you see a second house is always a house of family. It's also wealth. So there can be a battle in the family related to wealth between cousins, uh, in-laws, between family members. If you obviously not for everyone, but someone who have a bad or afflicted second house, will also remember past life child traumas. This is a good time to heal and bring out the inner traumas and cure them. Work on your Muladhar and Swadishthan chakra, lower chakras and heal them. For this, you need to pray to Bhagwan Ganapati by chanting the mantra Om Gam Ganapate Namah. Om Gam Ganapate Namah. Constantly. If possible, five to seven malas every day. Because constant chanting Fasting on Tuesdays or Saturdays, not consuming high calorie food will not only help you 
get well physically, but it will have a profound impact emotionally. Mars and Saturn will see the seventh. Uh, will from the seventh aspect will see the eighth house, which means it is going to trigger your reaction uh, towards your finances and financial stability. You might be scared when you see the reality, and now you want to secure everything. Good idea, but don't panic. This can increase anxiety in certain cases. Now, when Mars aspects the fifth house, it 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 will make you rigid and stubborn, and you would defend with all your might your values, what you have learned. But I will say, be flexible. You should defend what you know, but also learn to be a little flexible. Mars eighth aspect will fall on the ninth house. Now, this is interesting. This means you should be an empty cup. You should be ready to break yourself down and rebuild yourself because new information, new guidance is coming your way. And that can be radically different from what you have already learned or your entire life's experience. This change is good for you. Why? Because both Mars and Saturn are Yoga Karika. One is your Ascendant Lord and the other is your 11th and the 4th Lord. So it is destined to give you. Just you have to trust the process. Mars and Saturn is like an athlete playing in the field, getting dirty in the mud, healing, getting the wounds. But then his fitness, his mental strength, his physical strength is above all any average human being. So if you want to go above average, learn to sustain certain wounds, learn to do the hard work and learn to absorb the certain aspects of the family. Sometimes you can't change your family members. So start loving them or at least show the forgiveness. If you practice forgiveness meditation, twin heart meditation, guided meditation, grounding meditation, it will be really, really good for you. Wake up early before sunrise and do some some pranayam, some meditation and just have a walk in the nature. Try to do all the mantra jab empty stomach and you will see the difference. I will say it's a brilliant transit. It's a transit that where Mars, your energy meets you, the reality and what comes out is the best combination of your best possibilities, best capabilities and it is going to increase your willpower overall. Just don't get panicked or anxious. Aquarius. Now Aquarius will face Mars entry in the first house. And for you, Mars rules your 10th house. Mars rules your third house. Mars is all about action. Mars is all about execution. Mars is all about career, karma. And if it comes in the first house, it will change you forever. It will give you a new direction and possibly a new career. This is going to give you new opportunities and you will take some bold steps that you have never thought before, that you have never taken before. And this is the time when you have to re-evaluate your strength, your weakness, your skills and ask yourself a question. Am I good for this? or there is something better that I can do. Because when Mars and Saturn collides on your ascendant, it is going to create an internal war. It's a Samudra Manthan within you. And it's a Samudra Manthan. Why? Because your Dharma Lord Venus is in the first house. So you have to understand that there will be churning, there will be difficulties, there will be challenges. But what you make out of it? Do you drink the halahal, the poison? or you wait for the Amrit and keep churning the ocean. Results will be delayed, but you will get appreciation. You will get long due justice. And you will do it by yourself. Because Mars coming in the first house will aspect fourth house with the fourth aspect, securing your house. So you will be happy in your space. There will be changes that you will introduce. So maybe a Vastu change, maybe a renovation, maybe a little relocation, but at the end of the day, you will be happy. Mars following the energies, Mars energy follows to the seventh house. Therefore, it gives lot of courage and support to your spouse. Just that you have to be clear in your head and you have to be mentally very, very stable. And with Mars aspect, the, aspecting the eighth house, this is going to bring in the transformation. Be ready for that. Be ready to re-evaluate your life multiple times during this process. 
because Mars and Saturn coming in the first house shows you will die to give birth to yourself. Personality change is definitely on the cards. People should be careful while you are driving because there can be a chance that you will get some injury on the head. Hair loss will be a common phenomena for Aquarius people, for a lot of people. Reasons can be anything. Anger should be met with logic because then logic will diffuse the anger. This is a very simple way of anger management during this time. Obviously, wearing a red tilak, chanting Hanuman Mantra, chanting Durga Saptashati are some of the ways by which you can manage your Mars and Saturn energies. Remember, Jupiter is in the third house. So every decision that you take is going to influence your destiny. Just ensure that you be a student right now, not a master. Because when Venus goes exalt in the second house, it will give you everything that you need. But it will take a test initially, especially in your relationship. And it is a test of your character, how you are as a person. Because circumstance can be coming from anywhere. It can be your health, it can be marriage, it can be career. But at the end of the day, the end goal of the planet is same, to test your strength and resilience. So show that, show that you are going to stay on the ground and work for your success because hard work will have no alternative in your case. But at the end of the day, you will get the larger piece of the cake and you will enjoy the success. So I won't consider this as a bad transit, but I will consider this as a, a time when you should focus on structure, mechanism and execution. Pisces. Now for Pisces, Rahu is on your first house. Mars will enter your 12th house. Once it removes itself from the zone of exaltation, it enters the zone of donation. Now see, when Mars goes in Aquarius in the 12th house, it is very good for people who want to go into niche kind of studies, like if you want to go into aeronautics, if you want to go into space program, if you want to go into research of scientific studies, if you want to explore different areas, say you want to go to Antarctica for exploration, long distance exploration, it's a very good time for that. People who are involved into geothermal or any similar kind of education field, even business, alternative energies uh, will see great boost during this time. If you are using fossil fuel as a mode of business, it's time to think something as an alternative. Now, when Mars enters 12th house, you have to understand that it's your second lord coming in the 12th house, which means there will be investments coming your way. Your expenses will be on a higher side. You have to ensure that you are not spending it on medical things because medical expenses might also increase. Medical travel might also happen in certain people, in, in case of certain people. But it is a good thing because Mars being in the 12th house aspects your third house and aspects your sixth house. When Mars aspects the third house, it kind of protects you. It kind of warns you and makes you defensive, but don't be over defensive because if you cross that over defensive limit, you will keep on thinking all the negative. And then when Mars aspects the sixth house with the seventh aspect, this shows that you might also pay off your debt. That means some money is coming, but you are paying off your debt. So you want to sell off something. You want to go into demerger. You want to break a partnership. This is the time. If you are waiting for the divorce to be finalized, this may be finalized during this time, but some couples may also go in, in, in kind of a breakup like situation. So be careful. Because Mars from the 12th house has an 8th aspect on the 7th house. And this is kind of exit. This shows exit from some place. So if you really want to exit and if exit is something that you are looking for, be it relationship or be it business, you will get success. But if you want to show, if you want to patch up, if you want to start something, then it will need a lot of power and work and money, efforts, because the static friction of your life will be much higher. Then I will say that wait for Mars to cross Saturn and come on your first house. Then second Lord in the first house shows that your money is being consumed by you. You are getting family support. And ninth Lord in the first house is a Raj Yoga. But as soon as 
ninth lord right now will be moving in the 12th house this shows loss of luck so any luck based work speculative gains you should stay away from there while you are planning for investment take cons take the repayment into consideration very very strictly because while saturn is in the 12th house it wants you to follow the rules otherwise it will put you into isolation asylum or even there is a legal threat on you but if you follow the rules you are in the perfect condition remember that jupiter is in your second house so ultimately your ascendant lord is strong so you can utilize this power of ascendant lord to actually bring out yourself from the misery say you are unwell you will you may have to go to hospital you may have to spend some money but you will become well you will treat yourself and come back this is how you should look you should look in the final result you know there, there's a saying that all all well that ends well you should focus there reading bhagavad gita is an excellent remedy here uh becoming practical donating certain amount of money in some charity for good deeds and mostly late in the night before you sleep if you remember bhagwan hanuman it will be really really good thing for you for pisces i will say it's a preparation for the future and relief from the pain and suffering 